Question number eight, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Transport. Was the National Party's Northland by-election candidate... Order. Order. That's not the question that I have on my sheet. Beg your pardon. Let me start again. For order. Order. Question number eight, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree that the government's Northland Bridges policy was, I quote, absolutely, unquote, the idea of national by-election candidate Mark Osborne, as he claims? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, strictly speaking, it's the National Party's Bridges policy, but I'm sure the government will enjoy putting it in place. Uh, Mr Speaker, we have a great candidate in Mark Osborne with great ideas to ensure the future of Northland is a prosperous one. The the give me a chance. The Poohoy to Wellsford Road of national significance will open up Northland for economic development and tourism. That is why Mr Osborne has advocated strongly to ministers that the next logical step is upgrading single lane bridges on the Twin Coast Highway to ensure Northland is ready for the influx of new visitors and business that the Poohoy to Wellsford Highway will bring. Mr Osborne's commitment also reflects priorities identified by the Northland Regional Council in the region's draft land transport plan. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Supplementary. Was he disappointed that Mark Osborne, who he claims is a strong voice for Northland and, wait for it, actually lives in Northland, couldn't even name the taxpayer-funded bridges when asked by the media, given that they were supposedly his idea, that he announced the policy and that he can even see one of Order. them from his house. Order. There is absolutely no ministerial responsibility for statements made by Mr Osborne. Further sup I have a point of order first. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Uh, Mr Speaker, in the answer, the extremely long answer that the Minister gave, he made a number of political points that had absolutely no relationship to his ministerial, ministerial responsibility. He also, um, in terms of the original question, didn't in fact accurately answer um, or give an accurate answer to the original question anyway. Um, Mr Twyford is allowed to ask supplementary questions that come from Minister's answers, and that's what he order. did. Order. No, on this occasion... I cannot agree. I, I accept one or two points the member's making. I think the answer did not strictly address the question that was raised. That's true. I think the answer did contain an element of politics. That is also true. But that doesn't give licence then for the member to ask a question that is simply out of order in that there is no ministerial responsibility. Supplementary question, Dennis O'Rourke. To the minute. Order, order. Can I just clarify? We're not relitigating this matter. No, no, Mr. Speaker, I'm asking you for some further clarification, Mr. Speaker. Well, I'll on this occasion accept it, but only marginally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and, and when this matter was raised previously, it was in relation to the Prime Minister and whether he was uh, answering questions as the leader of the National Party or as the Prime Minister. And you previously indicated that where the Prime Minister gave answers that related to decisions that he had taken. Uh, as leader of the National Party, but he gave those answers as Prime Minister, he could be questioned on those. So I'm just wondering if you could clarify, Mr Joyce, as a Minister, was answering with party political material, uh, therefore would seem completely at odds with your earlier ruling to suggest that he can't now then be questioned on that. No, but I'll hear from Jerry Brown, the Honourable Jerry Brownley, Jerry Brownley. Mr Speaker, I think that uh, uh, raises an interesting thing for you to consider, uh, because the primary question that's accepted today as the primary question was accepted the previous day mentioned by Chris Hipkins, uh, and indeed the question accepted today uh, with regards to the uh, question to the Prime Minister, um, all really go to the same sort of uh, uh, point. So I think we should either have one thing or the other. Either uh, questions in the House should relate to ministerial decisions or decisions or comments made by ministers as ministers in their portfolio, or we just have carte blanche and we have an hour of campaigning every day. Yeah. Well, while I'm in this position, I hope Suits we don't us. end up with a, an hour of campaigning every day. In this particular situation, I accept the point the member's making. It is a thin line that I need to judge, and in fact, the Prime Minister, if he's answering the question, needs to judge us what capacity he's answering the question. And the, um, 
member, the Prime Minister, if he decides to suggest he's answering in a capacity as a leader of a political party, that's his prerogative to do so. The, the reason I'm comfortable with a question along the lines being on the order paper is the government Tuesday last week took the opportunity to very much make this a government initiative when they raised a government question asking the, then, the Minister of Transport about the bridges. But in this particular supplementary, the member asked, is he disappointed with the comments of Mr Osborne? Under no circumstances can I find any way which allows that to have a ministerial responsibility. Now, if the member wants to use a portion of the answer of the minister's answers and get it into order of the supplementary, good luck to him. But he certainly didn't achieve that in his supplementary question. Entry. Supplementary question, Dennis O'Rourke. To the minister, what are the names of the ten state highway bridges to be two-laned in Northland? Oh. Honourable Stephen Joyce, on behalf Honourable of the minister. Speaker. I am more than happy to share those with the House on behalf of the Minister of Transport. There is, of course, the Kaio River Bridge that uh, my colleague, the Minister of Economic Development, was passing over yesterday. There's the Waihau River Rangihura Bridge. There's the Taipa Bridge. There's the Tirahanga Stream Bridge. There's the Tahiki Bridge, number 569. There's the Waimako River Lowes Bridge. There's the Waimamakau River Hallahans Bridge. There's the Darby and Joan Cowrie Bridge. There's the Andersons Bridge. And there's the Matakoi River Bridge, also known as the Hardys Bridge, Mr Speaker. And incidentally, I heard that somebody was asked to name them yesterday. I understand they got seven out of the ten right on the first oh. shot, Mr Speaker, although I didn't meet the TV. And then Annette King, order, member order, of this House this today... Order. The continuation of this answer will not help the order of the House. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Has he, as Transport Minister, advised Mark Osborne, the man who announced his policy on the bridges, the names of each of the ten bridges, given that he couldn't name them when asked by the media last night. <laughs> Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, it's important to note that actually it was uh, the Minister standing as the spokesperson for Transport for National and the candidate that announced the, announced the ten bridges together. Uh, he has been advised of them. As I said yesterday, he got seven out of ten on the first go, Mr Speaker. And as I also said, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition was very supportive of him and said many long-standing MPs in this House could not name all the bridges in their electorates, Mr Speaker. Sa order, order supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Wasn't the real source of the Bridges policy Stephen Joyce and Crosby Texter's Joe DeJou? And why doesn't he just come clean with the people on this? <laughs> Order. Honourable Stephen Joyce. Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, speaking on behalf of the Minister of Transport, um, I have spoken to my colleague, the Minister of Economic Development, uh, who is also very enthusiastic about uh, roading for economic development in Northland, Mr Speaker. Uh, he is very encouraging of the project that this Mr Osborne, candidate for Northland, has brought up, Mr Speaker. And the only thing that we can be sure about Mr Twyford's line of questioning, Mr Speaker, is that there is one party in this House that is in favour of developing the roading network in Northland, and it ain't the Labor Party, and it certainly isn't the New Zealand First Party. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he see anything wrong with a candidate proposing $70 million of taxpayer spending, the minister seeking only general advice from officials, in his words, approving them without seeing any cost-benefit analysis, and then the candidate announcing that spending to win him votes? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, that sounds like a lot more analysis than the Labor Party went through in 2005 over the interest on student loans, Mr Speaker. Oh, supplementary. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Which of the best, which of these... Order. Which of these best describes his Bridges policy? Brazen, shameless, cynical and more than a little desperate, John Armstrong and the Herald. 
It sends a destructive message, but this is how things now roll under John Key, that was Matthew Hooton, that it amounts to corruption, Andrew Geddes, that it shows the government is highly biddable and, to be blunt, a bit weak. That was Rob, Rob Hosking in NBR. Or the Herald editorial, which said the bribe was insulting on so many levels. Well, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, in response to that litany of armchair quarterbacks, Mr Speaker, I, I will make... Uh, including one of whom has subsequently apologised for his column. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I would make the following comment. Order. Mr. Speaker. Order. Order. It was a long question. It deserves it long an answer. answer, and I'm looking forward to it. So, so two points, Mr Speaker. Uh, uh, my colleague, the Minister of Economic Development, was in Northland yesterday, and the Northland people were very, very enthusiastic about these projects, Mr Speaker. Wanted to know whether they could be built more quickly than six years and wanted to know which ones would be done first, Mr Speaker. But also, Mr Speaker, this is a continuation of a programme that this government has been running right around this country, Mr Speaker. If you want to talk about the Kopu Bridge in the Coromandel, Mr Speaker, or the Kurao Bridges in North Otago, or the Kaurau Bridges in Queenstown, Mr Speaker, or the Waiwakaio Bridge in New Plymouth, or the Normandy Bridge in Hawara, or the Highway order, to Waikato. Order, Mr order, Speaker, this order, government... Order! Member, Minister will resume his seat. I've heard enough. Question number nine.